Good morning, everybody. We're coming to you live right here from inside the main build facility of Bubba's Exotic Motorsports. I'm Tom, the ladies' man sitting right in front of the camera. Entering stage right is Bub, the master. Good morning, Bub. How are we doing today? It's Friday! So, underneath, or not underneath, um, behind the camera and in real life. So, let me tell you. This ruby red metallic flake paint from Ford, this is a 2018 Ford color, this is literally the closest thing to a mass production in terms of candy apple red. Beautiful paint. From like, you know, a couple years ago, 10 years ago, in like the custom paint. bike world, custom car world, when you would do like the three and four stage candy paints, where you would lay down your base coat red or your base coat gold, and then you do a red, and then you do a tint over top of that. This is literally, in reality, the closest thing you're probably ever going to find to that. This episode is brought to you by Bubba's Exotic Motorsports. Visit our website, 20,000 online part catalog, bringing you all the biggest names. Bubba's Exotic Motorsports.com. Miss Outlaw Boutique, the moose is loose on the web full time, ladies and gentlemen. Miss Outlaw Boutique.com. Nitto Tire, Nitto R Tires, Bub. I need to just make a little side note here. My entry comment about the color of this car was totally freaking irrelevant to everything we're going to talk about. And today. American Racing Wheels, bub. Those American are Asantis. Racing wheels are? Asantis, by the way. Comes from American Racing. Sort of. Right? Yeah. American Racing are? Wheels done Bubba style. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 2018 Mustang. Bub, before we jump into all of that, this is the Mustang everybody's been wanting to know about. It's the only Hellion twin turbo Mustang in the world of its type. We're going to tell about people about why this is different. But first, we want to give a big shout out, Bub, to Tim and the whole crew up at Crooked Horse Productions, man. That's right. We got a call with them today. It's at 1 o'clock, don't we, Bub? Uh, dude, I have like seven things going on at 1 o'clock. So if you overbook me there, too, go figure. I guess I'll have to take that. Which take it, Bub. Probably did, man. Take it, Bub. All right. Take it like a man. So let's talk about this car here, shall I'm gonna we? I'm going to talk about our new hire this week. OK. Tell everybody about our new hire, Bub. Well, who? Who's standing off set? Oh, Buzzard. The Buzzard, Bub. Yes. Hey, Bub, this week we decided to take a huge step forward. You know, 2018 was a banner year for us coming into it. We're moving more into the modern performance builds because you're building a tremendous amount of horsepower out of these late model cars, Bub. Mm -hmm. One of the things we wanted to do is bring somebody in full time with us, Bub, to help from the detailing and the ceramic style applications, taking the business to the next level. Well, you know what's funny about that too, now that you mention it, so, and it's one of the things that I was actually gonna do a whole, a whole episode on. Um, so there's a lot of, as everybody knows, in the detailing world, especially here in South Florida, it is taking off insane. It is, man. A lot of high-end rides here, a lot of money rides here, and everybody wants them clean. You don't have a $200,000 yeah. car and have it dirty, right? Yeah. It's just that simple. Yeah. Um, so you wanna keep them detailed, and one of the, you know, attached to the detailing side is, of course, the paint protection films, the PPF, the Expel. Huge, man. Also PPF the paint, paint protection paint. film. So also the ceramic coating, right? Yes. So now one of the things that I had come across in my latest research and schooling in terms of paint, because you know I stay up to the front edge of all the paint work as well, because paint yes, is really everything. That's your number yes, one that you see on the car. Um, so did you know, and I think, if I were to probably throw this out there and take a guess, there are a lot of people probably throwing sales pitches towards Mercedes owners, brand new Mercedes owners Interesting about- Interesting that you're gonna share this with the world, Bub, because this is something I didn't know. You probably not many people it. know, right? So everybody is out there selling the ceramic coatings, right? And some people are selling them for pretty big ticket items, north of 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, depending on the car, to ceramic coat them. Yeah. Well, did you know that Mercedes-Benz- Here it comes, ladies Utilizes and PPG paint out of the factory, mass production, PPG, and it's called Ceramic Clear. So those cars are already coming off assembly line, ready to go fully ceramic coated. So now there's these people out there, the clients, whoever's owning the cars, they buy these cars, they don't know it, they get the sales pitch from Joe Schmo, they pay an extra 2,500 for something that the car's already got. Ladies and gentlemen, Bub's telling you, protect yourself on today's newer vehicle. Hey, finishes. do your research. It already comes with ceramics in them, especially the higher end Euro. The Mercedes, yep. Good morning to Mackenzie Woodward out there at code 504, Bub, in the Midwest and Joe Kramer. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you around the world to Buzz Odom right now. Buzz has taken care of our personal fleet of vehicles for many years yeah. and joined us here at Bubba's Exotic Motorsports. Bubs, join us right here. I'd like everybody to meet you in person as well. Just come straight on up on the set and we'd like to introduce you to everybody. Buzz, good morning, man. How are you? Good morning. It's nice to see great. you. Good morning, Buzz. Good morning, 
He just got here like six minutes ago, too, even though we started at seven. Yeah, I run a little late tonight. Buzz, tell us a little bit about your background real quick before we jump into this uh, twin turbo Mustang and how we kind of wound up together. We're honored you're here as part of the Bubba's Exotic Motorsports family, and we welcome you and the rest of the world does as well. Tell us a little bit about your background, man. How did you wind up doing this? Well, I started with my passion for cars. You know, growing up with hot rods in the at the car shows and my dad building cars with me when I was a kid and sure. I just found a love for it and I got into detailing and I love the extent of, you know, cleaning from bumper to bumper, motor, interior, and then I've just kept moving up from there, moving up to the exotic world to do the Lamborghinis and the McLarens and you know, all the beautiful exotic cars that you don't see anywhere. but this Except place, here. Yeah, this place is paradise. Right? It, it, is, it is paradise. <laughs> Thank you, man. I am from Knoxville, Tennessee, so we didn't have we didn't have these yep. cars there. So I've made a major step up, and I have, I've, I've worked really hard since I've been here. You and, have, man. And now these guys, BEM, I've worked with them for a while doing their cars. You and, have, yeah. And they offered me a position to come join their team, and I – I could not pass it up, and, and it's, it, a, it's an amazing step forward, and I'm just really still overwhelmed about it. And the you know what's funny, great. too, Buzz, is that not many people know that there's always a backside to it and how everything comes full circle. So everybody yeah. knows, like, when they've seen our Good cars at Cars see. and Coffee Palm Beach, when they've seen our cars at SEMA, when they see our cars at any of the major shows, at the detailing fest, they have no idea that you were the you're man the behind it you're that put every one of those years. quality <laughs> shines on every one of those cars, and no one's known that for eight years no one's known it you know so now it's like it comes full circle people see it yeah, yeah man, it's, so we're very honored to have you as part of the BEM family we truly are we feel like we're the blessed ones and and we're very very humbled that you are part of this family it's going to be a great future together you'll be on the road at SEMA with us and stuff like that because it's one less thing literally that Bob and I have to worry about when we're worried about getting out there in front of people you know you'll be able to take care of these things and get us looking good in front of the yeah, crowds oh, man. definitely so I appreciate definitely. it welcome to the family Buzz Thank welcome you. welcome thanks Buzz Appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, Buzz Odom. He is going to be our official detailer. We're setting up a very special area for him right here within the walls of BEM to do this, Bob. Well, you know, it's crazy, too, because it is uh, it's it is crazy when you think about the fact that he is the single reason why our cars just look like it's they true. are dripping wet. It's true. And I kid you not, the cars literally look like, if you look at our Instagram, Instagram.com forward slash Bubba's Exotic Motorsports, you will see when you look at those cars, people literally will ask us, are those photos edited? And I've actually done videos yeah after I post a photo just to show people that have sent us messages like, hey, this is not an edited picture. It's this not. is literally me walking around the car, mirror image, looking wet, crazy quality shine. Good morning to Spanky out at Spanky's Hot Rods, Bub. He's out there watching. Your brother Nate is watching up in Virginia as well. Whole world's watching, Bub, and here it comes. Bub, this is the Bubba's Exotic Motorsports Hellion John Uris Twin Turbo 2018 Mustang. Mm -hmm. This Mustang was originally put together. It was bought by a very high-end client here at Bubba's Exotic Motorsports. The guy is actually a former Ford dealership owner. Several, as a matter of fact, right? Yeah, man, this is a pretty solid ride. Of course, 2018 Mustang. This is still considered the S550 body style from 15 to 18 was 15 a, to 17. Is there a reason, Bub, real quick? Why did they term it S550? Wasn't that commonly associated with the Mercedes-Benz product? If you're just calling it a model line, yes. But every car has its own model class. Like the BMWs have the M3s, which turns out to be the E36. E36, yeah. Right? And then there's the M whatevers, and those turn out to be the E46. So it's like each body style of a vehicle not only has what you call it what the normal people call it layman call it mustangs corvettes camaros but corvettes they're c7s there's okay. you know so on and on there's still like a little abbreviated version of it this body style of mustang was considered the s550 from 2015 to 17. Okay. now we're in 18 so you can move that up a year it has not changed that much front end redesigns rear end a little bit redesign and interior mostly is where that design changes happened so bub this car came to you after being put together at another location mm -hmm. uh, because the vehicle would not run Mm -hmm. um, you got the car in here. The uh, the quality of work is not, and I'm not being negative, ladies and gentlemen around the world, but I do work for the best. And you are considered one of the top three in the industry today. When we got this car in and up, we were pretty amazed at some of the things we found. Bob, splash shield not bolted on the way it was supposed to be. Bolts missing everywhere. Terrible well, you know, cuts I, around the downpipes. I see that stuff all the time in the industry. We get cars in here. We get cars in here from the biggest auctions in the world. We get cars in here from the biggest collections in the world. We get some of the rarest of rare one-of-ones, exotic Indeed. supercars. Indeed. It doesn't matter. We get crazy stuff through here. And it's incredible the quality of sometimes the work that you see. Now, that's not every case. Sometimes you get a car in here that's just jaw-dropping. and You're like, wow, this thing is just mint. Like The guys who designed it and built it didn't miss a freaking T. Very rare that that I happens. I see that very often. Very rare that that happens. There's always something that's 
just not 100%, and that's not the way you roll, man. When you're putting this kind of money into these kinds of cars, this car started at 50, it's already north of 100. So it's, it's when you start working around those kinds of numbers and you start changing all your engines and drivetrains and modifications and changing you know, color schemes and having custom carbon yeah. fiber pieces done, custom suspension done, custom wheels and tires done, you start having all this stuff done, that price tag starts bumping up really fast. And why would you shortcut it if you're going that far? That's correct, bud. So this car came in, it would not run. It would not even hold an idle, bud. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of people that were subject, you know, trying to render their opinions and their ideas. Uh, and we've talked about this car online. It's gotten a lot of attention. You did take a, a spot at SEMA this year. You did develop the world's only 603 horsepower stock block 2.3 liter EcoBoost in, uh, in cooperation with Turbonetics. Mm -hmm. Reggie Winnin up there. Yeah. So it's natural that this car wound up here. We are starting to see your styling cues show up on this vehicle, Bob, mm -hmm. in terms of carbon fiber touches here, the carbon fiber trunk, which has been painted the three-stage ruby red, mm -hmm. the hood, Bob, uh, which has been uh, been done. However, the 18 and 17 model year hoods are different. That's right, yeah, the, uh, that's when they did really the big redesign on the front end of these cars. They got a touch wider at the fenders, and also the front bumper design is different as well, which is an it upper is. and lower grille, the fog lights, and also the hood. A little bit wider, a little bit different in shape. So you couldn't just take your traditional 15 to 17 S550 product, which you could for the most part of most of these items, the shifters, the mirrors, um, side skirts, rear bumper diffusers, um, I mean, strut braces, suspension, yes. all of those components are going to be the same 15 to 17, but few pieces are different and specific for the 18 model line, like the upper and lower grills. We have Cervini's hooking us up with a set of those. They'll be in this week for this thing, so I can't wait to get that, and that's going to do total facelift on the front of the car. Yes. Um, get rid of that disgusting little honeycomb style that Ford's been using since like the early 2000s and 90s Mustangs that yeah. I've never really been a but fan of. That was of. a throwback to the 60s, wasn't it? The 60s era? Yeah, you know, it was, but it's it, to me, it just never looks right. It always just looks cluttered. Like, it looks like there's just too much going on where naturally I would prefer, and especially in this case, being that it's heavily boosted, more. it's got a huge front mount intercooler on it. So you darken this car up. It's got the ruby red metallic, so it's got that candy look to it in terms of its class. Now we darken it up and really add that rich touch of the carbon everywhere with the carbon mirrors, carbon trunk, carbon hood, carbon side skirts, carbon front lip, carbon rear diffuser. So we're going to have carbon all the way around. We'll do a full carbon dash in this car, really bring all that style together but we'll darken it up, and then we'll give that front end a totally new aggressive look. You've also darkened the lamps, bub. You've darkened the, uh, the badging. That's right, behind me, yeah. On here. yeah. that's right. This used to be chrome yep. right here. Um, I like your butt cheeks right there. That's hey, pretty hot, man. That's I a, grabbed that booty. That's a wet butt, boy. That is a wet butt. That's because you're out back there painting. You're, so you're de-chroming the whole car, bub, and yeah. you're darkening it up. Mm -hmm. One of the things I wasn't a big fan of, bub, however, is the... Um, uh, red interior, it doesn't match the exterior at all. Man. You know, it doesn't. It's uh, it's strange that Ford would have come up with this color combo. If I was a designer there, I naturally would have never allowed those you two to go together at all. Um, I don't even know if I'd offer that to a client if they wanted a custom order it's because so it's odd. just a clash of the shades. So it's one thing to keep your colors the same. You know, if you're going to do a red exterior, do a red interior, that works. If you're going to do a black exterior, you can do a red interior. Pretty much red interiors, you can work with like whites, blacks, just neutral colors. You couldn't put a red interior on a tan car. Wouldn't work, right? Mm -hmm. It's just too far off. But this is the candy depth of the paint on the outside, that ruby red metallic. This Real is different. like a, it's like an orangish, I don't even know what you want to call it for an interior, and it does not match at all with this exterior color. Naturally, me personally, I would pull that entire interior out of the car, do it all black leather, maybe a dark charcoal insert, which would play off some of the carbon shading, and then you could maybe go around the entire seams of it with a color match stitch, which that's is going to look real clean, really aggressive, really classy. And I'm sure that's where it's going to go. Probably. Bob. So outside of the cosmetic things you've been doing, Bob, and the mechanical things that you've noticed on this, for example, the exhaust was squeezed from a three inch to a two and a quarter inch, not the things you want to do on these, because turbos have to do what? You've taught us what, Bob? Well, you want them to breathe, man. It's, uh, you know, when you're building horsepower and you're looking for a lot of it, the more it breathes, the more it's going to you know, produce power, and that's uh, that's what you want. And in turbocharged applications like this, that's what you want, man. You want to be able to let that sucker get that air in, get cold air in, which is, this, of course, relied on the front mount intercooler. Get that colder air in there, you're going to get more pressure out of it, and you're going to burn much better, much cleaner, better throttle response, better power, better power band all the way through, a smooth power package, and that's exactly what this car is doing, laying down just over 750 horse to the tires. It is on seven and a half pounds of boost, and that is perfect for this twin turbo setup. Not going to blow the motor apart, not going to hurt it, and still capable of going upwards of 30 pounds of boost, depending on the wastegate springs that go in here. No chance that stock motor could handle it. That would be when you take that next step and you pull it apart, and you have to upgrade all the internals and do your fuel system, auxiliary systems. Sure. So you could lay this thing down easily over 1,200, 1,500, 2,000 horsepower. 
with this style setup. It just depends on how far you want to go. One of the things you just mentioned was a wastegate. Tell us about what a wastegate is. So in any sort of forced induction, you want some sort of safety in terms of how much boost you're going to produce. Um, you know, in turbocharged applications, those are called wastegates, right? So you have the turbocharger that creates the pressure, generates pressure, and that gets forced into the motor. Well, if you don't stop that pressure from getting forced or, or creating more pressure, then something's going to happen. The internals are going to get forced with so much air it that they blow release. apart. It needs to release. It needs to go somewhere. So motors can only handle so much depending on how they're built. This is all stock internals. It has not been opened up. This is full stock block style system right now. So seven and a half pounds is a safe number of internal pressure on this motor to add to the system without blowing the thing apart. The wastegate does exactly that. You can change springs in these things that will literally allow them to open up to let the turbo's pressure that it's creating bypass going into the motor and out the exhaust. It literally dumps it through a bypass pipe into the exhaust system. It just flows the extra boost right out the rear of the car. And that's the... A no, that would be think, the blow off out. So, and a lot of people, Bub, think that that's what's coming, the, where that sound is coming from, mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that escaping sound, but that's actually coming from somewhere else. Yeah, that's the blow off valve. So that's in between, most of the times you hear that in between, noticeably between shifts, right? So that's actually releasing that extra boost pressure. The difference between what the turbocharger is spinning, the rate of which the wheel is spinning, it's still creating, for example, in this case, seven and a half pounds of boost. Mm -hmm. It's creating boost, but when you take your foot off the throttle to change gears, the throttle plate shuts, but that turbo is still spinning and creating that boost. Interesting. So this valve is sitting in between the turbocharger and the throttle plate. This valve is sitting in between that line, typically on the cold sides where you want it, and closer to the throttle body, the better it's going to be, more responsive. It opens up and allows that turbocharger boost that's still building to just go out to the atmosphere, and it keeps the turbocharger from having damage to the wheel. Spanky, out there at Spanky's Hot Rods, I only have one question for you. Do you understand any of this? Bub, we got this car in. It wouldn't run, man. Yeah. So you immediately called our good friend, the owner of uh, Hellion Turbos, mm -hmm. let him know it was here, right? John Urist is his name. Great cat, man. He joined us a couple weeks ago. Yeah, man. It's uh, That was one of the key things, of course, forced induction applications. If your tune's not right, park the freaking car. It's just that simple. Naturally, you're probably going to blow the thing up. A lot of guys do on dynos, not tuning them properly, and they get greedy for boost, right? So... Greedy for boost. Yeah, key factor, whenever you are working with superchargers, turbochargers, you want to make sure that your tune is set properly before you try to go out and run that thing, try to start pushing really high numbers, high horsepower numbers, high, you know, high boost levels. This thing was an absolute disaster. Just got to start from scratch and work from there. So, Bub, you called John. You guys talked. Uh, yeah. the, this is the, uh, they have done other applications that were successful, although this was a massive failure. Tell us what you found and why. So and this here comes, car, ladies and I, gentlemen, you've been waiting to understand why this one is unique and it's the only one like it in the world. So one of the things that I noticed was this car was just shutting down on power everywhere between like the 4,000 and 4,800 RPM range. Didn't matter what gear you were in, it was just shutting down on power. So you go through, you can plug in these things typically done through HP tuners. That is a fully unlocked version so you can get into the tunes and you can go through this thing, everything from torque limiters to the way boost is controlled, to fuel pressure, to maps, to what sensors are looking for to what boost pressures you're running, what your torque limit is from the back of the crank towards the rear axle. You can literally control every last piece of this thing, and you can do it all the way down to a scale of how much power are you putting out per gear. First gear is going to take 300 foot-pounds of torque. Second gear is going to take 600. It just doesn't, you know, it depends. You can literally set those numbers to whatever you want. Naturally, when I tune, I unlock all the way. If you've got 1,200 horsepower under the hood, you probably want that 1,200 horsepower. You don't want it limited per gear unless you're running something stupid like 2,500 horsepower in a Corvette that you're never going to hardly plant that kind of power down to the ground safely. So you only want maybe 600 foot-pounds of torque laying to the ground in first gear where you're trying to plant that car and get out of the hole. If you try to plant a vet at 2,400 horsepower, it's not going to happen on, in first exactly. gear. It won't. No, no chance. And you have a couple questions, too, Bob, we're going to ask as well. So you can go through, and on this case, at that 700-plus number to the rear tire on this car, pump gas, 93 octane, 7.5 pounds of boost, I would naturally say unlock that whole system, right? The average driver can handle that in today's world. This client especially can handle that yeah. because of his history. Um, he can handle that kind of power, and he wants that power. He doesn't want it limited per gear or per boost level. You know, you don't want to limit it to six pounds of boost in second gear and five and a half pounds of boost in the next gear, three pounds of boost, because you can limit on today's computers what each gear is doing. And that's where the problem was in this car. It was limited 
torque and boost in each gear. So we had to go through and open all those parameters up. John and I worked on that super hard back and forth with each other. Because it is an 18 Mustang twin turbo, there is no map available for this car yet. That's pre-done, so you have to build each one per application. And then once you've got it from there, if we were to have, for example, another 2018 come in for another Hellion twin turbo kit, we already have the tune mapped and ready to go. We know it works, it's proven, it's laid down the power, and it's reliable. You just take it, drop the file right into the new car. And Bob, the one big difference between this car and the other cars that had been done is what in terms of the transmission? So this is the first manual, which there is, is uh, that's Christmas. where all the problems were coming in. So this is the first manual transmission there twin turbo boost setup on the 18 Mustangs, and that's where all the shutting down was coming from. It was still looking for an automatic map shutting down at certain RPMs like it was shifting. And so there it is, ladies and gentlemen. The car comes to Bub for the technical prowess. He figures it out. It was because it is a standard shift vehicle. Bub, Joe Kramer wants to know, what is the difference between ceramic coating and clear coat? Okay, so that's a good question, actually. So let's go back, like, prior to, uh, I don't know, January, February, February of 18, right? So let's go back four months. So four months ago, Joe, before Ceramic Clear really started hitting the market, clear coat is traditional. That is traditional clear coat, nothing more than paint of a color, and then a clear coat finish. So there are all different kinds of stages and levels and qualities of clear coat. We shoot with the best here, of course, by PPG, but there's also entry-level grades for guys just shooting budget paint jobs, right? That, you know, the Makos, the quick, you know, 399 paint jobs and crap, right? You cannot put high quality material in that kind of car. Yeah. So there are different stages of clear coats. Everything's gonna give you a different quality in terms of, is it chip resistant? Is it going to be heavy duty? Is it going to flake sitting in South Florida sun or wherever you are in the world? What's the shine characteristic of it gonna do? Is it gonna look deep or is it just gonna look dull and flat no matter how much polishing you put to it? So all of today's cars come with base coat, clear coat, paint jobs. It's considered just a two stage, base coat, clear coat. This one is a three stage. So this was a base coat and then a tent coat, which is to make it have that candy depth and glow to the paint in terms of the red and how it changes, you know, the color changing a little bit, but then also a clear coat on top. So it's three stage on this one here. Now, ceramic coating was something that took off really big a few years ago and has taken over the automotive industry in terms of the detailing side, where it's literally you have your base coat, clear coat, what the car would be painted with, but then from there you can apply that final layer of protection literally with different scales of hardness in terms of how good it is in, in terms of paint protection and what it does from chip resistance, the same thing as the qualities of clears you buy. How good is it going to last? What's the shine going to do? It's supposed to be virtually scratch resistant. I feel like we could probably dent and scratch it very easily if we tried. I anything. For sure. Um, but it is that added layer of protection. It is kind of that next level up, the newest thing in the trendy world of technology and that added layer of protection to your car. But one of the biggest things is with ceramic coatings on cars, most people don't understand. It's not about the quality of ceramic coating you put on, it's about the prep you put to it. You, anything that you have imperfection wise in your clear coat, it's, before you put that ceramic coat yep. on, is gonna stay, you're locking you it, in. it in. You've literally locked it in. So it's one of the things where you have to not only just spend the money for the ceramic coating, which is again, on average between 1,000, 1,500, 225, depending on the size of the car, the vehicle, the material you're going with, the brand of what you're using. But you also need to do that pre. That's just to do the ceramic. Then you do that pre, which is getting your paint clarity where it should be before you lock that layer in. And, Bub, people should know that the ceramic coating has really re uh, replaced waxing today as we know it. You know, it's uh, it's funny, too, because there's, you know, you've always got a little coat of wax. You know, it's always, it adds a little shine, you know, changes the way things beat up a little sure. bit. You, some guys always do it. Um, but no, once you do the ceramic coating, typically ceramic coating is like, that's it. It's, that's it. it's supposed sure. to, you know, you can get it for six months, you can get it for a year, you can get it for six years, you can get it for 10 years. And again, it's a coating that will naturally wear off and fade. But like the bead characteristics of it, if you took mud and poured it on a car and it was ceramic coated, you could literally just hit it with a water. Don't touch it. Don't scrub it or anything. You hit it with water and, and the stuff gone. just falls right off. Yeah. It's absolutely incredible to watch happen. It's gone. Like, for example, you've seen the examples where something's been uh, ceramic coated and then they light the hood of the uh, ceramic coated uh, vehicle on fire. It mm -hmm. doesn't burn through the paint yeah. or blister or bubbling. Yep. Mackenzie Phillips says, good morning. She loves the Mustang, Bob. Mackenzie, of course, your sponsor with Code 504, right. which are S10 conversions, Bob. And by the way, Carrara is watching. Good morning to Carrara. Joe also would like to know, do you guys recycle the wastegate pressure back into the exhaust system, Bob? Yeah, so, okay, so that's actually a really good question. Also, Joe, thank you for that. Um, so on the wastegate side, which is essentially what you would consider your dump, that's where you're getting rid of that 
excess pressure, you're getting rid of that extra boost. You typically on street car stuff that is street driven, you don't want it quiet because when you do open up that wastegate, you're essentially doing like an open cutout if it were to just dump to sure. natural atmosphere because it is exhaust pressure. So naturally we do revent back into the exhaust and it just dumps right out the back of the car. So virtually there's no sound noticeable when you have that wastegate open up for the street cars. When you have track cars, of course, most guys will run like a three, four inch pipe straight off the exhaust side of the turbo, and then they will also run like a two inch side right off the wastegate, and it just dumps super loud, and that's what a lot of people notice That'd in terms of track, sound, application. track application. Yeah. yeah so we like do that, revent right. ours back through the exhaust system, push it through all the filtration, whether it's got resonators, whether it's got mufflers, or whether it's just straight piped, it is still going through the exhaust. One of the other things too that happened on this vehicle, we have to remove the cats on these vehicles, or it'll, remelt, or it'll melt the cats, or at least install very high flow cats. Yeah. These cats were removed without the owner knowing it um, and uh, being asked if he would like to have the cats back. That's a big no-no, isn't it? Yeah, big time. It's, uh, you know, naturally you're not supposed to. It is against the law to remove cats, um, but there are catless downpipes out there that you can buy that are direct fit systems. You can take down your factory system and use it for off-road use only. Yeah. Only. Only. <laughs> uh, so you're supposed to typically do catless systems in off-road terms. But in today's world of high performance cars, there are a lot of guys out there, and trust me, this happens every all day in shops yep. all across the yep. world. Yep. People do remove factory catalytic converter systems and they go with a high flowed cat system or even a catless off-road downpipe which gives you just more turbo pressure, more boost, more flow. Sure, absolutely, Bob. So, Bob, there you go. Thank you for giving us a very solid explanation about why this vehicle is different. It's but wait, we have to talk about one key factor here. Let's talk about it. So why in the heck, when I'm considered the stance king, does this car not have the right stance? Because let I'll me tell you, look I at this freaking turd burglar right morning. now. So listen, Asante hooked us up with a set of, we did 20 by 9 and a half inch fronts, 20 by 11 inch rears on this thing. These are ABL 13s. They are gloss black with full carbon fiber accenting so all the way around the lip of this rim is carbon fiber we will instagram that later hey don't worry about it now uh but we'll instagram that photo later for you guys here's d there's d right there so back to the suspension let me tell you so you get these cars most people get them they go and again this shows how our client is not a cheap client you go and you buy a Mustang GT, the average kits come with anything V8 with an automatic or manual transmission, the rest of it's basics from there. You're gonna get disc brakes front and rear, you're gonna get power steering, you're gonna get all that crap. The options typically are whether you go with upgraded brake systems, upgraded sound systems like the Shaker 1000s, or if you go with like the Magna That's Ride a, suspension. A, a type, type of stereo, the Shaker yeah. 1000? So, or if you get the Magna Ride suspension. Well, this client, not being cheap, bought every one of the options, of course, <laughs> and that just stuck us in a pigeonhole in terms of suspension because this does have a Magna Ride, which is three, it's a three switch selectable suspension on this car from the factory, from Ford, so you can change the way that this car rides and handles. It doesn't change height, but it does change the rate of which it sways and how it handles on the road and plants that power. So now we're up against finding a set of springs that work to drop this car down, fender well to tire, we'll drop this thing down about an inch and a quarter. Of course, the one kit that we bought does not work with Mag Magnified, so I guess we'll just have to shove it in inventory. Put it in the wastegate. And I'm not putting it in the wastegate. Big show tomorrow, bub. Let's talk about the number one rated internationally syndicated motorsports podcast that's heard on Podcast One and Blog Talk Radio, iTunes, and all of the other major platforms. Ladies and gentlemen around the world, this is going to be big. It's no secret that my very close friend is Paul Sr. from Orange County Choppers. Bob, who joins us tomorrow? Uh, who, I don't know. Paul Sr. from I Orange County I feel like you Choppers. just let it out. You nope, just said I, it. But I'm then missing you just... two other parties to that. Well, I think you said you might have Mikey Tuttle coming on, right? And did you say Nick was coming on? That's correct, Bob. I think so, yeah. Joni? Nick uh, stuffs his pants, by the way. Does he really? He That's, does. That was hilarious, man. I told him I'm going to have him dance for Robin. Stop, dude. I did. All right. Yes. Did anybody miss the uh, season premiere of American Chopper, uh, 10 o'clock uh, Monday night, uh, Bob? Did... Uh, uh, that uh, that was a great episode, man. Yeah. So much about that. We talked a little bit about Tuesday. You can see that Pilgrim TV, who owned the show on the first uh, go round, they're going to have another successful round this time. Uh, you can clearly see that they are going to steer the whole family back together as one, man. Yeah, you just have to stay tuned and see what the show shows you. Plus that we know behind the scenes. Stuff. That's what I'm saying. How about the fact that? Mikey, but you'll just let it all out if I don't freaking shut you off. How about the fact that Mikey is now the marketing manager? Are we not supposed to talk about that? We're not even supposed to mention that. Not even. You're going to have to stay tuned till tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, for doing a Bubba style 9, 10, 9 to 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on the Bubba's Motorsports Facebook page live. We are the only 4K 
podcast, motorsports podcast in the world filmed 4K. Bubba. That's right. So stay tuned, guys. Check out the site. If you haven't seen some of the upgrades we've done, Bubba's Exotic Motorsports.com. Whatever it is you are linked to, we actually did a crazy pretty hot promo video that is out on the front page of the oh, site, on our YouTube, on our Instagram, and on our Facebook. Uh, it's like a 30 second of just like some of the sick rides that we have around here with some pretty cool music going on in the background. Uh, I don't know. It's just some whack little promo thing that we put together, but it looks really cool. Looks really good. Good morning to Paul Nolan. I, I'm not sure where he's joining us from, but good morning, Paul. Thank you for joining the BEM family. So tomorrow, above 9 to 10 a.m. on the number one rated internationally syndicated motorsports podcast, doing a Bubba style. We will be joined by Paul Tuttle, senior from Orange County Choppers, the iconic Mikey, and Nick, who stuffs his pants. True story. Right, Bubba? Hey, if you don't believe me, you can catch that on Discovery Channel's American Chopper. <laughs> <laughs> One o'clock, we have a, a telecom for our Skype conference with the good guys up there at Crooked Horse. Tim and the whole crew, we're going to jump on that, and we're going to keep everybody posted. What, what goes on with that, too, bud? Yeah, I'm not going to give anybody information. You can't. I'm not. You give everybody everything, and that's what happens. I have told you, yeah. I'm not giving anybody anything. So stay tuned for tomorrow's podcast. Keep on doing it Bubba style. Ladies and gentlemen, that does it for this episode of Doing It Bubba Style. I want you to get out there and touch somebody's life in a really positive manner today. Let's open the door for somebody who's got their hands full, an elderly person, a mom with kids. Whatever the case may be, let's open the door for somebody. Can we please? Let's put shoes on the bottom of somebody's feet who may have holes in theirs because they're down on their luck. And if somebody's hungry standing on the corner with a sign that says, we'll work for food, let's take them right next door to the Sitco, the Sunoco, get them a power bar and get them a protein drink. It's cheaper than your designer cup of coffee, ladies and gentlemen. Tomorrow, 9 to 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on the Bubba's Exotic Motorsports Facebook page, ladies and gentlemen, the number one rated internationally syndicated motorsports podcast as heard on Podcast One, Blog Talk Radio, iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, all over the world. We will have Paul Sr., his beautiful bride, Joni. We will have Mikey Tuttle uh, as well, and we will have Nick, who apparently stuffs his pants. What do you think? Any questions you have, ladies and gentlemen, sales at Bubba's Exotic Motorsports.com. Sales at Bubba's Exotic Motorsports.com. We will answer each one of them. And tomorrow you can call in and join Tuttle's Live with us at 714-242-5166. Six, six. We're going to wrap this segment up, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you around the world for joining us. We appreciate you letting us into your hearts and into your homes. We know you have a lot of things to do during the day, and we appreciate you spending your time with us. We recognize the value of that. Until tomorrow morning, ladies and gentlemen, let's keep on doing it. Bubba style. Little man, you ready to go have some lunch? What do you think, man? You want to go grab some lunch? Huh? It's about that time, isn't it, babe? Right? <laughs>